Darby broadcasting live from West Swanton at Earl Fournier's farm, the Fournier, Fournier family farm. And we're standing in a field of grazing corn and Earl, David are going to tell us about the results from their grazing corn investigation. Earl, <laughs> what happened here? Uh, Looks like a disaster hit. It, I, it's a war zone. Uh, there's a lot of feed. Uh, but there's a lot of it that's not getting utilized by the cows. Uh, the stuff grows really well. Uh, seems to be drought tolerant because it's an awful dry year. Yep. Uh, certainly a lot of dry matter per acre, but I'm not sure if raising is the way to harvest it. Do the cows like it? They really took sure. them a while. <laughs> it took them a while to acquire a taste for it. Uh, but I wouldn't say this is their favorite plant to graze. No. Uh, we had a partial part of this field was uh, a BMR Sudan grass and if you were to take a picture of that you could see how well they graze that as compared to the corn. What's different about the sorghum in terms of how the plant looks? They maybe finer stem. Uh, I think the leaves are probably the smaller leaves but it's a lot finer stem mm -hmm. plant and there has to be some issue with platability, I okay. would assume. Now, David, in terms of um, working out here, you know, has it been an issue just getting the cows out here into the pasture? Yeah, it's, it can be difficult when you got to move the wires because you don't obviously let them have the whole field or anything. Right. Especially how tall it is now. But Can the cows actually see the wire in there? Have uh, they gone out? Yeah, or? they've kind of gotten on the other side. A few of them have. <laughs> so because it gets hung up because it's so high. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, you'd have to get, I don't really know how they do it. That's another thing you could look into, how they set their fences up when it's that high. Do you think if the cows, could they be trained to eat it? You think now that they've seen it once? Probably. I would. Like over time? <laughs> maybe try it again, you know, it works out good if you want to, uh, after take a first cutting off and we see it. Like my dad said, it grows good and this type of weather, yep. hot, and usually that's what we get in July. Right. What about, um, I mean, because I was thinking personally no that, you know, with the amount of biomass that was claimed in the, you know, sort of the literature we found, and considering it grows well in hot weather, and our other grasses don't, that this would be a really good crop to try. Is it worth trying again? For grazing purposes, uh, if you're going to look at dry matter per acre harvested by the cows, I'm going to plant BMR Sudan grass. Got it. Okay, there's more biomass here in the corn, no question about that, but we're not getting it harvested. That's right. That's the way we had the sorghum. Now the sorghum, we could have harvested that earlier, we are kind of waiting for the corn, and you know, we would get another crop. You won't get another crop of this one either. This is true, right. And there's no question that that BMR Sudan grass is just as drought tolerant as this corn is. Yes, correct. Without a problem. And then maybe yep. even more drought tolerant. But um, we can see some promise here, maybe as a stored feed crop. That would be what I would consider in the future for. Next time I try it, it'll be probably on a s smaller acreage base. Mm -hmm just to see if we can get it dried and see what the quality is after it's uh, harvested. Uh, because there's no question there's a lot of dry matter per acre. If you were double cropping a hay field, bird crop coming in with this, and then turning around, it's, it's because it's planted, the, the density is so heavy in here, the weeds aren't a real big issue. Yep. Uh, you know, you could almost come in here and no-till either triticale for the fall or turnips or whatever, yep. and all that weird stuff you're promoting. Right. Uh, and get another crop off of it. Right. Late fall right. grazing exactly. as a possibility. Yeah, because this seems to me like there's a lot of feed here. All right, well, yeah, definitely a lot of feed. we got more inve more investigation to do. We'll return next year with the next crazy project for Earl and David Fournier to try here at Funny Farm. I mean, Fournier Acres. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to thank the farmers of Organic Valley for supporting this on-farm research project.